Oh, hello. It is unhaul day. So whenever my little handy dandy bag overfloweth with books that it's time for me to say goodbye to, I film a video and I tell you about what is going to the used bookstore. I, that if, if you're ever wondering where these books go, I take them to my local used bookstore, McKay's, which is absolutely wonderful. Or sometimes I will put it in a little free library if my bag is truly overflowing and I'm, I'm not going to McKay's anytime soon. Uh, yeah, so today's unhaul is exciting, at least in what I'm gonna currently talk to you about. I seem to recall that I filmed some books in between my last unhaul. I'm pretty sure that happened. That seems right. So if so, let's put that footage in right here. Okay, so first up we've got these four, and all of these are being unhauled because of space reasons. Not space like outer space, bookshelf space. So I've read three of them, Farthing, The Chalk Man, and A Lady's Guide to Mischief and Mayhem. All three of those I enjoyed. I actually think I gave all three of those three and a half stars. Oh wait, no, no, no. I gave A Lady's Guide to Mischief and Mayhem three stars. All perfectly enjoyable and would recommend. Farthing is sort of like an alternative history mystery. The Chalk Man is a serial killer come back from the past thriller, and A Lady's Guide to Mischief and Mayhem is a serial killer thriller meets historical romance. So I'd recommend all of them. I just, I don't need them and I want the shelf space. Leviathan Wakes I originally got from McKay's because I thought that I was going to read it as a part of um, a Goodreads Choice Award nominees project I was doing, but I eventually decided I wasn't going to get to that. And as time has gone on, I'm just not interested in it. So it feels like I shouldn't just hold on to it, especially since it's pretty chonky. So... That one is also going back to McKay's for space reasons. In that case, I guess outer space reasons applies as well. And then these four we are unhauling because I did not like them. I gave The Maidens and the Cartographers one and a half stars, which is a rating I give to books that I thoroughly did not enjoy, but I'm not like offended by them. I don't think that they're beyond redemption. I could see an audience for some for the books, like I could see somebody enjoying them, but I personally really did not like them. The Maidens for the dramatic prose and pacing and the Cartographers for like being boring and wasting a very fun premise. And then I DNF'd both The Bones Season and The Atlas Six. The Atlas Six because I could not deal with the writing and The Bones Season because it was just kind of boring. So yeah, those are all getting unhauled for I did not enjoy them reasons. And if not, awkwardly, well, let's just move on. The books that I have to talk to you about today are exciting in the sense that all of them, every last one of them, I've either read and I'm just moving along, or I attempted to read them and decided to DNF them. So none of these are just like, hey, I didn't end up reading these at all. I gave all of these at least a good faith effort to try or I fully read them. The ones that I'm getting rid of that I've fully read, either I just don't want to hold on to them, like they never fully entered my red shelves or I was doing a pass of my red shelves to make room for other books and in the process of that recently I decided I was ready to let a few things go. So let's start with the DNFs shall we because you know spicy. I think actually most of these most all yes all of these were in a vlog of some kind. So this one was in my travel slash reading the books I bought on vacation vlog. I got this in Wales. I DNF'd it because as soon as I started reading, I realized that it was very misogynistic. And I'm very happy with that decision because my friend who also got a book in the series found that to be the case for the book that she'd tried. So it's from the 90s. I think it just hasn't aged that well. Then all of these were from my triad chapter for YA fantasy. Um, and most of these I just wasn't compelled to keep going with. So we've got The Beautiful by Renee Adier. I was bored in this one, so I DNF'd it. Legendborn by Tracy Dion. I couldn't get into the writing. I read a good chunk of this. I've read like 80 pages, I think, and just it wasn't clicking for me fully. So I DNF'd it. I fell asleep and when I woke up the next day, couldn't remember what I'd read of Where Dreams Descend by Janella Angelis. So I DNF'd it. Oh yeah, Illusions of Fate by Kirsten White was very clearly going to be a YA fantasy romance and I immediately was not into the romance. 
So I DNF'd it. Another one that I was not into the writing on was The Rest of Us Just Live Here by Patrick Ness. It, yeah, no, didn't work for me. So I DNF'd it. And then Flamecaster by Cinda Williams Chima, Chima. Yeah, this was just, I realized that a younger version of me probably would have liked this book pretty well, but I just wasn't in the mood to commit to a long series of YA fantasy when nothing about it felt particularly memorable or special. So I DNF'd it. Yeah, so those were all of the DNFs. And then the rest of these I did read, but I either didn't like them enough to hold on, or I did like them enough to hold on to them for a while, but the time has come for them to exit from my collection. Let's start with the ones that have never entered my collection. So these were two other ones that I got on vacation and read in that same vlog as the one I DNF'd. <sighs> the Dark by Emma Houghton. This is a perfectly entertaining isolation thriller. The setup is that, well, it says one dead body, 12 suspects, 24 hour darkness. The 24 hour darkness is because they are all at the Antarctic Science Research Center. The former doctor died. The new doctor who is arriving comes to suspect that that person was murdered. Just trying to figure out who done it. This is perfectly entertaining and I think definitely evokes the cold, creepy vibe pretty well, but just, I don't know. I'm not gonna remember. I already don't remember a ton about this book. I will not remember anything about this in a year. So I just don't feel the need to hold on to it. And then Embassy Town by China Mieville. This is very cerebral. This is very literary fiction with speculative elements. And I thought I was getting just a good old fashioned sci-fi, aliens, humans in space, good time. And this is a lot about semiotics and sort of like the philosophy of language, which is fine. Just not really what I thought I was getting. So it's not gonna hold on to it. I have gotten several recommendations of other places to start. I think it sounds like the best place for me to go is City in the City, uh, which I think is a take on a detective story. I forget, whichever one was the take on the detective story was the one that got most recommended to me as a place to go with him. So we'll, we'll try something else from him, but this didn't end up being a favorite for me. Then the third Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osmond. I enjoyed this. I think I gave this three and a half stars. This is perfectly fun. It's like a murder mystery set in a retirement village. Somebody dies and they usually try to solve cold cases, but now they're going to try to solve this hot case. And I've actually heard from a lot of people that I may want to try the audio and that they really enjoyed the sequel a lot more than this book even. So I think I'm actually going to continue in the series, but I didn't feel particularly attached to this. This, so that's why it's gonna go. But yeah, I actually think that I'm gonna read the next one, but do it as audio from the library. And then finally, The World Doesn't Require You by Ryan Almakar Scott. Perfectly good. This is definitely, I think, very thought provoking, very dense and clever. A lot of it is based in sort of obfuscation and sort of making the reader work. It's very dense. Uh, which is fine. I think I would have enjoyed this more if I had been reading it in the context of having discussion with other people. On my own, it was hard for me to fully get into this for like enjoyment purposes, but I found this very edifying. I think that this was certainly art. This was literature. Uh, so if you are looking for an alternative history, speculative collection of short stories, I think that this could be a good choice, uh, but I just didn't feel the need to hold on to it. Okay, let's go with some YA. So first of all, well, two of these are middle grade actually, but Root Magic by Eden Royce. I actually think maybe I'm gonna hold on to this and give this to my niece because I think that this would be a good one for her. This is really, really good. I just haven't really found myself referring to it or recommending it a ton. Therefore, I just felt like it might be time for it to go. But basically think of this as maybe some of the same thematic concerns of something like To Kill a Mockingbird, but it is set in the Gullah Islands of South Carolina, and it is essentially using Gullah magic as the basis for a fantasy world for a middle grade audience, and basically about our main characters learning about the realities of being Black in the Jim Crow South in the 60s. So. Yeah, I think that the folk magic, the integration of, of African American folk magic into this is really great. I really recommend this. I just haven't found myself referring to it. So that's why I decided I could pass it along. But like I said, this reminds me that maybe I should just hold on to this and give it to my niece because I think she would like it. Green Glass House by Kate Milford. This is a between a middle grade and a YA mystery 
having to do, man, how do you even talk about this book? It is, it's speculative. It has a speculative element because it's a world not our own. It's like a, it gets kind of brutal at the end. I don't know. I don't really know how to talk about this book well at this point because it's been a while and like my memories were just being like shocked by some of the brutality of it at the end. Basically, there's somebody who might be trying to steal something and there is a strong speculative element that becomes increasingly clear as the book goes on. And I'll just leave it at that. I do think that this is good. I would recommend this. But again, I just haven't found myself like particularly thinking about it or referring to it. So for that reason, I felt like I could clear up some space. But isn't this cover beautiful? I love this cover. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, this might also be a good one for my niece. We'll put that one aside. And then How to Have Feminist Sex, A Fairly Graphic Guide. I had seen this recommended to me at some point. I thought that this was actually aimed at like an adult audience, but I would actually put this as more like for teens. Uh, and I think it does a good job of being a feminist sex guide for teens. But again, haven't found myself thinking about it or referring to it much. So I would actually, I would love to give this to my nieces, but I don't, I don't think that my sister would be down with that. So I'm gonna instead circulate this back out into the community. Okay, then a stack of adult books, all of which I don't think I gave any of these. Maybe I gave this first one three stars. The rest of these I gave at least a three and a half. I just feel like I'm not referring to them and I'd rather give them back out into the community rather than holding on to them. Another Little Christmas Murder by Lorna Nicole Morgan. I got this in ooh, a couple of years ago when I was really trying to like get my hands on every isolated close circle mystery I could. I do not remember much of anything about this. Yeah, even reading the back of this, I don't remember it. So for that reason, <laughs> I decided that I could let it go because uh, it's just, I'm sure it was fine. But if I had to take a quiz about this right now of even like basic what happens in it, I would fail that quiz. Oh, Swiss Vendetta, I actually did quite like. This is by Tracy DeHaan. This is set in the Swiss Alps. It is another isolation trope kind of situation. This is the beginning of a series. I think because I'm not gonna continue in the series, I don't necessarily feel the need to hold on to this, you know, when I was kind of doing a pass through, but I would definitely recommend this. I thought that this was a more kind of like literary and its quality type mystery. So if that's something you like, I think this could be a good candidate. And it was cool to see, you know, Swiss, a Swiss based mystery. I hadn't, hadn't necessarily read a lot of that. And it was snowy, very atmospheric, and I enjoyed it, but time to move it along. Ooh, this is a hot take one. Um, the City We Became by N.K. Jemisin. I did really enjoy this when I read it, but I'm not gonna read the next one. And I think because of how much more I enjoyed the fifth season, this made me realize like, this is just not one of my favorites from her. Uh, I definitely like the short story collection from her a lot better. I think I also process that I may even like the short story version of this book in that collection better than I like this book. So I gave this four stars and I think I'd probably stand by that, but it hasn't really stuck with me. And I think just in comparison to the other things I've read from her, this is just not my favorite. So for that reason, we're gonna say goodbye. This is a good reminder. I need to keep going in the Broken Earth trilogy because that was amazing. Um, okay, and then the rest of these are different flavors of a romance. We've got a uh, fantasy romance and three contemporaries. So fantasy romance wise, Monroe by Cresley Cole. I thought that this was a good, considering how long it had been since we got an Immortals After Dark book. I think that this was a pretty good reintroduction to the world. Um, I just, even now I'm struggling to fully remember what all happens with our pal Monroe. I remember the whole like, there's a alternative timeline multi-dimension aspect of this. It was good, entertaining, pretty, you know, whatever. Monroe wasn't the hero I was like dying to read about. So I'm really waiting for her to like get me back to the couple of people who are still hanging out there, mostly Nyx, to kind of finish the series off. I think, you know, in retrospect, this kind of just made me realize I'm ready for the series to be over. I'm ready for her to land the plane. So yeah, I'm just, I don't cherish this and therefore I feel like I should let it keep going. Let someone else enjoy reading it. Yeah, Sweet Hand by N.G. Peltier. First of all, this cover is too fucking cute. Okay, I like Calico. All of it's adorable. This was a really cute contemporary romance, but it hasn't really been super memorable to me. So for that reason, you know, I needed some space in my romance section. You're about to see that with two other books. And this felt like the right candidate to get moved along. But if you're looking for just, it's called Sweet Hand and it is just sweet. It's not because it doesn't have on-page sex, but just because it feels 
like these are just really likable people having a romance <laughs> and that was just nice. And then I decided to let go both of my Kate Claibornes just because I don't really find myself referring to these books but I think that Kate Claiborne writes really high quality romances in terms of the level of writing and sort of the level of ideas in them. So if you're looking for something that truly is genre romance but has more of a literary quality to it, I think either of these could be good options, particularly I think love lettering. But yeah, I don't know. I just, like I said, I, I was having to make some deep, deep cuts on my romance shelf to make some room and these were the two that felt like the right ones. So for that reason, they made the unhaul pile. And with that, I think those are all of the books that I am getting rid of as of right now. Let me know what you thought about any of them. Let me know where your favorite place to take your books that you unhaul is. And yeah, I think that will do it for me. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below, and I think that that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today, and I will just talk to you soon. Bye!